there we go. Okay, so uh, thanks again for, for joining this evening. Uh, my name is Henk Kombrink, and I am going to talk you through uh, what North Sea Core is, um, and I'll tell you what we do, and uh, at the same time also introduce you a bit into the geology of the North Sea uh, by looking at some core and, and some uh, nice maps uh, along the side. Um, so the, the outline of the, the presentation is, um, as, as I said, it's a quick introduction into uh, North Sea Core. What is Core and why is it important? Uh, then we will delve a bit into North Sea geology. Um, and then the, the fourth item I'd like to address is um, what our breadth of activities are. Um, before getting on to that, uh, a quick introduction to myself. Uh, this is uh, a picture <laughs> that was taken, uh, I think, more than well, about two years ago uh, in the midst of lockdown when working from home was kind of the norm. That is the window uh, behind which I'm sitting at the moment. So you've got a bit of a, an impression of um, where I am. This is a house in the north of Aberdeen in Scotland over here. Um, but as you can probably tell from my accent, I am not a, a native uh, Brit. I was born in uh, in the Netherlands and grew up in, in, a, in a small village called Kostvlies in the north of, of the country. Then I moved to Utrecht where I studied, did a PhD and then worked for a while. Um, before And then I realized, yeah, I've been in Utrecht for 13 years now. It's about time to move on and, and explore some other places. So in 2011, I uh, moved to Aberdeen, uh, joined Total for a few years, then spent six years in consultancy. Um, so working as a geologist, uh, mainly for the oil and gas sector until the, when COVID kicked in. Um, management saw the, that as a great opportunity to uh, get rid of us all. Uh, so since then, so that's um, more than two years now, I've been writing with a small Norwegian company based in Oslo on uh, kind of subsurface related news, um, initially in the in Northwest Europe. And now I, I do that on a global basis for a magazine called GeoExpro. That is my main role. Um, and besides that, I am also one of the directors for North Sea Core, and I'm also the editor for a, a scientific magazine or journal in the Netherlands. So I've got different hats on, um, which kind of suits me well. It's uh, in that sense, moving away from a full time position uh, in an office <laughs> to now yeah, kind of fully home based uh, with occasional travel. Um, it, it is. It was quite a, a change, but it, uh, it it is fine. I'm I'm happy with um, what I'm doing at the moment. So that's a very quick introduction into what I do on a daily basis. Um, and let's just focus on one of those now: North Sea Core CIC. Um, CIC stands for Community Interest Company, uh, which kind of sits in between a charity and a limited company. And I think the benefit of a CRC is that um, we, you don't need a, a board of trustees and, and all the admin that comes with a, a fully charitable body. Um, but at the same time, we, we, we can also pay ourselves uh, income for, for what we do. And um, But at the same time, our, any profits we make uh, have to be reinvested in the company. And also, if we would cease to exist at some point, um, which is definitely not the plan yet, um, we would then transfer the funds uh, to another charitable uh, body. So it is clearly not for profit, profit, but at the same time, uh, because we invest a lot of our time into it now, uh, we uh, we can we can draw um, just a normal income from it, which uh, definitely helps to keep it going. So just as a bit of a background, so uh, as you know, I, um, I'm based in Aberdeen and uh, when I was um, helping organize a conference here in Aberdeen, we had a, a committee meeting in Kings or in, um, in West Hill, a village just uh, west from here. 
uh, at an operator and uh, they were just saying in, in passing like um, well we are trying to rehome some core <laughs> um, from a field that we are currently decommissioning and I thought oh that's a golden opportunity uh, because so, uh, until that moment I was under the impression that core was the holy grail and could never be um taken just by private individuals <laughs> but that that changed and and so i got in touch with them the next day and uh they were very happy to uh to donate some core from from that field which is the dunlin field in the northern north sea so i ended up um driving to the commercial warehouse where all that core was stored uh during my lunch breaks and um filled up the garage in that way <laughs> which then ultimately became too small obviously the garage and then we were offered some some space at the farm just uh, 10 minutes from here um and we are still there uh, the, the the space has grown significantly as you can see on this picture here on the on the on the right top uh this is this is our current uh, workplace so where, where most of our core sits so it's a nice uh, steading, uh, a bit cold and damp in the winter, I must admit, but uh, in summertime, it's a, it's a really nice, uh, nice place. So it's admittedly, it's not the ideal conditions to store core for a long time, but yeah, we, we can't afford a com fully commercial storage space. So it's fine, it works. So that all started in 2017. We launched officially. Uh, th by that time, I had teamed up with Kirsty Wright, pictured here. So um, she's based in Edinburgh. At the time, she was, uh, oh, she, and she still is. Um, and uh, yeah, we got, we met up through this because she was organizing con a conference in London, and uh, I got in touch about kind of uh, showing some core there, and that's how we learned to know each other. And since. Um, 2020 uh, we are the two directors of the officially um official company north sea core csc so it, it's really nice how things have developed over time so as such we are the only unaffiliated uk offshore core repository of course the bgs is the official one based in nottingham and they are of course way bigger than we are but our remit is is really to uh not to keep the core, but re re redistribute it to, to anyone who is interested in this. And yeah, fortunately, there, there seem to be quite some people, institutes, uh, universities interested in this material, which is really good. So we, we are, so Kirsty and I are the two directors, and then we've got a, a, a part time assistant, Angie Bruce, who's also based in Aberdeen, and she helps us out with all the logistics um which as you can probably imagine is adds up um quite a bit because we've got requests from all over the world and they're all unique and they all need to be managed on a case-by-case -case basis uh we are also supported by uh, quite a large team of volunteers who we can call on uh when required um and yeah our our, our remit is to to um to take core from companies who are disposing of that. And as you uh, may have heard, or as you may have, may have seen, uh, a lot, lot of oil and gas fields across the UK continental shelf are nearing the end of their lives. And as a result, companies, um, yeah, dispose of that, of their half of the core. The other half is already at the BGS um in the national archive but the company's half as it's called is now increasingly being disposed of and that's where we come in um we we are now officially integrated with within the whole disposal process so a company tells the north sea transition authority they tend to dispose of a, a core then the bgs first takes what they want to uh, to have either to uh, replace their stock or to to maybe fill some gaps and then we can make a selection um, uh, on the back of that um, and as yeah so these photos again this shows the the main core or uh, the space where we store the core there is a section behind this door over here 
where we store some more, <laughs> but we really try to keep it this like like this because we we, yeah, we can't expand beyond this too much. Um, and then the garage here, uh, just a few meters away from me, that's what we call North Sea HQ, where we've got um, a nice workbench and and some shelves where the the cut cord pieces uh, are being stored for for shipment later on. And and the whole idea, as I said, is is to um, to make this available, um, accessible for the geoscience community. Uh, we also integrate that with digital data, um, high level interpretations, et cetera, to, to all uh, make it even more um, accessible and uh, also to put the core in context, which I think is quite important, especially for those people who are not really uh, familiar with the, the North Sea. Uh, just a quick uh, introduction into what core actually is. Um, as the name already suggests, it is a cylindrical um, bit of rock that is uh, obtained from uh, the subsurface. Um, and uh, <laughs> initially, when I I remember when I did a an internship at uh, in the Netherlands in 2003, I thought, oh great core that I can I can study uh, all all these I I looked at a, a gas field in the north of the Netherlands and I thought oh I'm going to look at all the core from that field and and it's going to be really nice but only then you realize what well, a few weeks later <laughs> that it's uh, actually you're actually quite lucky if there is a core from a well because coring is expensive uh, and uh, in, in many in many wells um, especially nowadays, uh, cutting core is, is not standard anymore. Um, so it's only the, the, the very reservoir bits that tend to be cored. So it, it's a real snapshot of, of a very small percentage of a well that is ultimately cored in many cases. Um, then, yeah, the core comes out of the ground as, as, a, as a whole core, as this image suggests. So it's a nice cylinder. And then it's being cut into mostly three pieces. Uh, so, and the middle bit is called the biscuit cut. So that's the, the flat bit. And then two half cut core bits on either side. So when this is done, the this bit of half cut is, is going to the BGS from directly at the, from the beginning. And then the biscuit cut and ha other uh, half cut bit is um, that's the company's uh, uh, half, as we call it. So uh, as, again, the half this half cut core or, or this one is already in the National Archive, and th that is really uh, the case. There are BGS is missing a few bits and bobs, but overall they they do have a very good representation of all the core that was cut in the North Sea already. Um, so, because some people in the past have thought that we are kind of stealing from the National Archive, which is definitely not the case. Um, so you can imagine a, a bit of half cut core as, as this picture uh, shows. It is quite easy to get it mixed up in terms of what is up and what is down. And that is why the companies very often put so-called trim lines on the outer side uh of of the core and the trick is that red is should always be on the right so uh, that that is the the trick so in this case yeah red is right and yellow is on the left so this is up this is down if that trim is if that trim line is missing then um yeah you have to rely on your geological knowledge <laughs> Uh, to see what is up and down, which is definitely not always that easy because uh, some core is really nice and you see some great sedimentological features, but a lot of core is also quite dull and you won't be able to, to easily find out what is up and down. So these trim lines are really quite useful. So that's a bit of half cut and the biscuit cut core tends to be uh, put in resonate in resin uh, as you can see over here, just to, to hold it all together. And, and that's what we call a resonated slab. So you see three bits of resonated slab here from uh, from the brand. And this one is nicely oil stained, as you can probably um, recognize from the color. 
Um, but sometimes they don't resonate the, the biscuit cut core, so then it's just uh, loose pieces which um, can very easily be mixed up. <laughs> um, so how is core taken out of the ground? Um, normally when a well is being drilled, uh, the rock is just grounded or grinded to small uh, particles we call rock flour or, or cuttings. So you, 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 it's quite difficult, uh, quite a challenge to recognize what type of rock you're drilling through, although it is still possible. Um, of course, if you look it, the, at these cuttings through the microscope, it's still possible to find out what kind of lithologies you're drilling through. But if you really want to know a bit more about what the reservoir looks like, that is the moment when core uh, really comes in and and this is a typical core uh, bit so this drills uh, around a cylinder uh, down into the rock and this cylinder um, within the bit is being preserved and so this is this is where the core kind of originates from and of course you've got different sizes of of, of drill bits and usually the deeper uh, the well the, the smaller the diameter, hence a uh, smaller diameter core as well. And this is uh, a core operation in action in, on one of the North Sea platforms. We were supplied with a lot of information on, on coring operations by Andy Moffat a few years ago. He's, he's the, uh, the coring king <laughs> at uh, BP, and uh, I think he, he's one of the most experienced coring operations guys in the North Sea, I'm sure. Uh, so we really benefited from, from a lot of information he provided us with. And, and this is, again, all uh, available through uh, on, on our website to, to learn a bit more about this. Um, I already touched upon why is core important. It is, in a way, it's the only a vehicle to really ground truth what you're actually looking at um, deeper down at the two three kilometers depth or so um, because so he so here you can see a seismic line um, and and the well here sitting in the middle and the seismic line is is a nice provides you with a really valuable image of the subsurface how the subsurface looks looks like but it is based on on uh, on sound on waves and so you 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 can deduce what what type maybe or you can guess what the lithology is at the, the bottom of the well but the only way to really find out find out is is look at the cuttings and core is is even better because that provides you with an intact um impression of, of how the how the rock looks like um so that's why core is very important. So here in this uh, graph, you can see the wireline logs, which are normally obtained in a well after the well was cored or uh, drilled. So yellow means sandstones, brown means finer grained uh, sediments. So this is a typical, hello, mate. I'm presenting. Good night. <laughs> That was our youngest. Um, yeah, so this is a, a typical wireline log showing uh, a reservoir uh, with mixed sands and shales. And, and um, in this case, where this black line is visible, I hope you can see that. That's where the core was uh, cut. Um, and, and that allows you to have a much better inspection of how this reservoir actually looks like. So again, a, a very important bit of information, especially if, if you discover a field and you don't know exactly what type of sediments you're dealing with in, in order to make a reconstruction of deposition of phases, et cetera, core is, is very important. And using the uh, cores, you can then make uh, thin sections or even uh, closer uh, looks uh, like SEM uh, images of, of, of the rock to even know pr more precisely how how the reservoir looks like and what the porosity is, what the permeability is, which ultimately is very uh, important to know 
how easy it is to flow oil or gas or or water or pump CO2 in these rocks as well. It it has various or it has a lot of applications really also beyond oil and gas. So in terms of where well, where is our core from? Um, so but overall it's from the UK continental shelf. So um, this is a map showing the North Sea as a whole. And this gray line shows the um, the median line. So all all the the area uh, west of that is is belongs to the UK continental shelf. So most of our core by far is from the North Sea, um, all the way from the the northern North Sea over here, uh, central North Sea to the southern North Sea over here. Um, because that, that is ultimately where most of the fields are. This is the area where exploration kicked off uh, in the in the 60s. So this is where the, the oldest fields are that tend to be kind of um, deplete now and, and uh, taken out of production such that the core is becoming available. Uh, we are currently waiting for some West of Shetland, our first West of Shetland core to come in uh, soon. Uh, so that's quite exciting. Uh, and we we had one bit of core from the East Irish Sea until a few years back, but that was just one bit of core, which we also distributed again. So, but I think there is uh, currently a, another core coming our way at some point. You never know exactly when it turns up, but uh, hopefully soon we'll have some East Irish Sea core as well again. Um, yeah, so the, Many, many wells, thousands of more than 10,000 wells have been drilled across the UKCS over the decades. Not all of those, as I said, uh, have been cored. Uh, uh, it's a smaller selection of that. But still, if you look in the in the 70s, the 80s and the 90s, it was still fairly common to core quite a lot of the reservoir. So. Um, Nowadays, it's not at all common anymore because of costs and, and people tend to know how reservoirs look like in the North Sea because there is so much data already. Um, but so we really benefit from that coring spree that uh, took place um, in the, the 70s, 80s and 90s. So now I'd like to give you a bit of a flavor of what types of core we've got. Um, so at some point, we started to realize yeah, this is actually quite an opportunity to as 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 we get donated core from different companies from different fields from different places uh you you think oh this is a great opportunity to to build up a really nice cross section of different core from different places from different ages throughout the north sea and 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 that is what we have what we are continuously trying to improve on or to expand on. Um, so now, of course, we, we always have a wish list of, of, of core we'd like to add to our collection, but um, as the, the, the slides to come will hopefully show you, we, we are starting to get a really nice uh, selection already, which has taken about five years to build up. So because we are really dependent on when core is becoming available and if that is uh, something new for us, that's that's not always the case, obviously. So these slides just give you an impression of, of the different types we've got, and, and I will go through that in a chronological order. So starting from old to uh, the youngest types of core we've got uh, stratigraphically. So starting with the Devonian, um, that is about 400 million years back, and the, the the North Sea was characterized by so-called intramontane basins, uh, which developed as a consequence of the Caledonian mountains that, that stretched all the way from Scotland and further uh, to the southwest, Ireland and, 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 the, and uh, the, the Americas, through Scotland to Norway. And that Caledonian mountain belt, as this cross-section also shows, started to collapse uh, in Devonian times. And uh, this is again very schematic, but in these intramontane basins, like here, there's yellow bits on the cross section and, and the same kind of yellow here, um, intramontane basins formed. And in those, 
fix uh, successions of, of fluvial deposits, uh, alluvial deposits uh, were um, can be or yeah were deposited in Devonian times, and this uh, core uh, nicely shows that. I hopefully hopefully you can see a bit of the details. It's a, it's a, it's a conglomerate or or a brexia, uh, very kind of coarse grained uh, bits of rock there. Um, in, in a finer grain matrix, a typical a typical facies you would expect in in in, a, in situations like this. This core is from the Inner Moray Firth, uh, where this red dot is. So in in a, in a yeah alluvial kind of uh, environment at the time. It's called old red sandstone. Well, if you look at the core, it's not really red. <laughs> in that sense, this this bit of core is. Maybe a bit of an anomaly because in other places, like in the Midland Valley, you probably know that the nice old red sandstone outcrops in Montrose. Um, that's the typical reddish uh, core you've got there. Uh, here in the in the Inner Moray Firth, it's it's quite grey, which ha probably has something to do with the uh, later diagenetic history, where the the iron minerals were um, uh, reduced and uh, not, uh, didn't precipitate to give it that reddish color. So moving on from the Devonian to the Carboniferous, just one slide to show you a, a bit of uh, how the Carboniferous looked like. So that's about um, 320 million years ago. Uh, we're looking at the upper Carboniferous here. And the, the, the main thing that happened at the time was the, the, the collision between this northern continent here and Gondwana, which is kind of Africa uh, here in the south. It's not on the map itself. Um, and this cross section shows that this is the Variscan chain that was situated here and along the southern margin of the basin. And as such, a, a, a fallen basin formed at the time in which uh, a very thick succession of sediments were deposited. And the Carboniferous only, so that is uh, in total representing about 40 million years of geological time. Um, it's not much. Um, it is in the Southern North Sea, we are looking at here, the, the, the whole of the Carboniferous tends to be, well, it, it can be up to four kilometers, five kilometers maybe in thickness, which is just incredible. <laughs> it's thicker than everything that is sitting on top. So it just paints a picture of how how much sediments, how many, uh, yeah, how much sedimentation took place during that fairly short period of geological time. And most of these sediments, uh, especially during the, the, the late Carboniferous, are dominated by deltaic and, and fluvial um, sediments. So, and, and these, bits of core form a good um I, of, yeah form a good example uh, of that so th these these are uh, conglomeratic or yeah very coarse grains as you can see in this uh, slab as well uh, fluvial uh, deposits um so that's that's those as well and then once these river channels they might tend to migrate across the delta plain when they migrate, you get uh, floodplain deposit, deposits on top, like these blackish uh, mudstones over here. So th this is a classic kind of Carboniferous succession of fluvial sandstones and floodplain deposits on top. Obviously, you've got a lot of coals in the Carboniferous as well, um, but they we, we don't actually have a lot of, well, we've seen a few small bits of court coal but uh, not too much of that uh, but normally the preservation is also quite poor for coal it tends to just break up and dry out and so it doesn't tend to be uh, very well preserved in core especially if it's uh, <laughs> 20 to 30 years old so uh, moving on from the carboniferous to the permian quite a, a change in um, in climate from a tropical climate to a desert uh, environment where rainfall did occur at times, uh, but it was definitely a lot drier. So we can kind of subdivide the North Sea into a northern Permian Basin and the southern Permian Basin at the time. 
with the so-called mid north sea high sitting in between so that's what this map already shows and and it's kind of uh, mirrored in the in that in this cross section over here and and sh stands for mid north sea high so southern permian and northern permian basin and initially um kind of desert type of um sandstones were or aeolian sandstones were deposited across in all these yellow areas so uh, and, and there was kind of a, a so-called lake a dryland lake in between or in the middle called it silver pit lake in the southern north sea um so that consists or the sediments deposited in that in that uh in the playa lake are, are much finer grained but along the margins you find a, a very uh quite broad belt of aeolian deposits and and this core over here is an example of that some of these rotligand cores are um red but some are gray uh, are, are palish. The, the, the colors really uh, change uh, if, if you go from one location to the other. It's definitely not all red like, like this. And here you already see there's gray <laughs> uh, horizons in there too, which again has to do with uh, the early diagenetic history. Um, then during the latest Permian, quite a dramatic flooding um, happened. So the, this whole area had subsided to an extent that it was sitting below global sea level. And then the idea is that at some point a connection um, got um, or it came into existence with, with global sea levels over here, or the, the open ocean in the north. And this system of, of, of uh, playas and, and surrounding um, uh, deserts flooded quite in an instant and um, that is that happens really in the latest Permian so that is about 250 million years ago so that whole system of of of, of deserts flooded and uh, became a shallow sea and in that shallow sea we um, because it was hot there was a lot of evaporation and the connection to the open ocean was just intermittent so we we see that evaporite started to be deposited and and this slab over here is a nice example of a so-called anhydrites that that um have been deposited along or across a, a lot of these areas both in the southern and the northern permian basin so there's anhydrites and there's halides uh, carbonates as well and dolomite as this bit of course um nicely shows and and these dolomites uh, in this case, then are, are fractured. So there's a nice fracture being preserved uh, in this uh, in this core with uh, quite a bit of porosity. You can see the pores in here. So that that's kind of uh, where you may well, may find oil, for instance, uh, that has recently been proven actually um, in the Southern North Sea. So it is uh, it is a, a reservoir rock. Whether it's a very good one, that's to be debated. Um, moving on to the Triassic, um, we still find ourselves in a, in a fairly enclosed continental uh, basin. Um, and there are sandstones. This is, for instance, a nice Sherwood sandstone from the East Irish Sea. Um, mud clasts um, into a, a matrix of, of, of sand, fluvial sands, really nicely preserved. But the Triassic is also characterized by a lot of finer grain sediments deposited in shallow playa lakes. And these cores form a good example of that. And these were obtained from the, the so-called Smith Bank formation more in the, in the middle uh, center of the basin at the time. Uh, moving on to the uh, middle Jurassic, I'm not, a, I'm skipping a few <laughs> geological time or periods because it will a bit, it will take too long if I would address all of them. Um, but this one is quite important, the Middle Jurassic. Um, so the North Sea at the time was uplifted because um, there was a, a, um, a, a volcanic or a thermal dome sitting, so that the whole asthenosphere uh, um, moved up uh, and 
caused uplift of the, of the whole of the central North Sea. So all this gray area. And as a result, um, deltas were radiating in all directions. And one of those deltas was deposited in this area, and that's called the Brent Delta, which later became the reservoir for the Brent fields. Uh, and these cores form a, a nice illustration of what the Brent Delta system, uh, as we can call it, uh, looked like from kind of shallow marine uh, deposits, really nicely laminated here. It's part of the Rennick formation, uh, Ness formation here, which I think is the is the best one in terms of sedimentological features that have been preserved. It's a lagoonal, fine-grained um, type of deposit. So it's deposited at delta top uh, with some really nice intercalations of, of thin sands in there and, and lots of nice burrows as well, as you can see over here. Uh, and in this bit of nests as well, there's, there's very nice burrows um, in this bit of core here. So that that is in a snapshot a, a few a few um, slabs of 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 nice uh, Brent type of core uh, as I said shallow marine del deltaic uh, type of sediments and of course the Brent wasn't drilled because it was uh, it looked so nice it was drilled be because of yeah it consists or <laughs> there's a lot of oil in the Brent or there used to be a lot of oil in the Brent and this slab shows that nicely from a an oil stained section. So it's clear that this is from the from an oil field itself. Then moving up into the stratigraphy a bit, uh, we skip the lower Cretaceous, we skip the Upper Jurassic, but this is a uh, a time the Upper Cretaceous, Late Cretaceous. So that is uh, about uh, 100 million years ago. Um, the North Sea looks entirely different at the time. Um, sea levels were higher. Uh, a lot higher than they were today, and um, coccoliths, very small um, animals, were the are the, are the, the tests of these coccoliths were deposited uh, on the sea floor when they died, resulting in in the in the nice uh, white chalk that that is obviously can be seen uh, along the south coast, but it's also uh, a present in most of the offshore area, as you can see. Um, and it's, it tends to, be, oh, it can be quite thick, uh, top of my head, maybe up to a kilometer in places. It's, it's really, or even more, uh, of, of this white chalk with nice stylolites in there as well in, in places. We don't have a lot of chalk in our collection, um, because it ten doesn't tend to be a very important reservoir in the UK. So we, we do only have a few uh, bits of chalk from a few wells. Um, so, it, but it's really good to have that in our collection because it's carbonates, uh, something different from the clastics that, that uh, kind of dominate in, in the North Sea. And to finish off with our youngest uh, cores are uh, of, of Paleocene, Eocene age. So that's about uh, 55 to 50 million years ago um, and at the time the, the Scottish landmass was uplifted because the the Atlantic um, rift started to become really active uh, so lots of uplift of, of the UK as a whole so lots of sediments were eroded in this area and ultimately deposited into into the North Sea as well as the west of Shetlands as well um, and so that really resulted in kind of turbidites being shed into the basin, all these yellow areas, that's where these turbidites, so sands were, were deposited. And, and some of those sands we call the 40s, um, after the 40s field, for instance. And, and this is what a typical 40s sand look like, looks like. Uh, it's mostly quite structureless, uh, as this core already suggests. Uh, so just a pulse of sands into the deeper basin and then when when that's over you you get the the fines being deposited on top so it's a, a it's a real alternation of 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 sandstones mostly f uh, um not very well or not very laminated so it's quite structureless and then on top you've got the fines this is another bit of um 
40s type of reservoir, which uh, looks <laughs> quite chaotic. And I think this is because after deposition, you sometimes get remobilization through fluid escape as, as such. Uh, and, and, and that is probably what, what this uh, core uh, represents. It's all very broken up, <laughs> especially the, the finer um, sediments. You can see this, so the darker is the finer grain sediments and there's just seems to be sent maybe even injected, injected. in there. So that's the youngest type of cores uh, we've got. So that's it's still 50 to <laughs> 55 million years ago. But uh, yeah, th that that's that's kind of the, the the upper limit in terms of reservoirs you've got uh, in the North Sea. So then, just uh, to finish off the the presentation, um, a few slides on what we do with this kind of a variety of of core. Um, and apart from shipping it to universities, schools, interested individuals, etc., we also organize uh, workshops. Uh, we've got our own training collection, um, which obviously contains uh, the best bits because we get we get to see it first, <laughs> and we use that for workshops uh, like here uh, for the Open University. Uh, last year in a, in a nice little church here uh, close to Aberdeen, uh, where we just run through the, the geology of the North Sea, uh, pointing out, um, yeah, looking at core uh, and and maps as well. So it's it's a it's a really nice thing to do. Um, we also um, supplied core uh, to um, the 2021, I think, uh, Royal Institute Christmas lecture delivered by Chris Jackson. Uh, a little bit more than a year ago, which was a real highlight for us because it was obviously broadcast uh, on national TV. So this is Chris in action, uh, uh, showing uh, the, the public um, what these cores can can tell. So that was a real highlight for us. Um, we were also this year we um, we got recognized by the Geological Society for our work. We won the RH Worth Award for, for our um, achievements in outreach and public engagement, which was uh, really nice to see that there is recognition for what we do. Um, so yeah, I already alluded to that. We, we put together uh, te university teaching sets uh, quite frequently. Um, which consists of mostly a pellet of core and and the cores you've just seen uh, ranging from Devonian all the way to Eocene that is a typical teaching set we try to put together uh, a set that represents as many deposition environments from the North Sea as possible which can then be used for just to learn people how to interpret core how, what, what, to, what to look for and uh, to de interpret deposition environments, uh, etc. So we also supply that together with with seismic lines, for instance, to in order for people to put the core in, into context. So if you're if you don't want a pallet of core, we also have got teaching sets, um, uh, smaller ones like this one. Uh, it's called this is called the Southern North Sea Exploration Box, and it's a recycled. Um, core box with just six pieces of typical Southern North Sea core and nicely labeled and, and that comes with a poster as well. Uh, that enables you to explain what the, 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 the Southern North Sea looks like in terms of uh, typical um, types of, of, of core and rock. So uh, and, and those uh, exploration boxes, as we call them, they, they mostly go to schools uh, some to universities or private individuals involved in STEM, for instance. We also supply, uh, as I said, digital data on our website. There's a whole range of different uh, types of digital data uh, freely available, uh, like, for instance, CT scans. Um, I think I can even show, the, show you this one. This is a CT scan through a bit of carboniferous uh, core and as it turns, the uh, the lighter densities are being filtered out, 
such that only the higher densities remain and and not all the cores are just as nice because there has to be density contrasts in the core but this one as you can see it really nicely shows the the i think these are the finer grained uh, intervals that tend to in this case be a bit uh, denser and uh, by turning it around you can really um, interpret or look at the 3d structure of the core so all these things are available on on our website as well another kind of highlight in our <laughs> existence was the uh, an exercise where we put out an entire brand core um, that was not actually in our possession it was uh, Aberdeen University's uh, possession um, but uh, yeah we thought wouldn't it be nice to lay out an entire brand core from the top to the base and it's all all along so this is the top of the core here um it was it added up to about 150 meters or so so um it was a major job <laughs> to lay it all out in this field but it really gave you a really good sense of of the actual vertical thickness of 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 a court section um and this is the court section from uh <laughs> we we took some drone footage so you can't see the details at all but uh, this is the top, so that's where this uh, location is, and this is the bottom of the core, and and these are the formation boundaries. And just by walking past that and and then droning it, it really gave us a, a a much better idea of 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 the dimensions of of these uh, of of in this case the the Brent Delta. Uh, again, this video is also available through our website. Um, and again, for, I think for educational purposes, it's just a nice thing to 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 watch. Um, so yeah, our remit really is to export the geology of the North Sea as well. And so not only through teaching sets or through um, digital data, disseminating digital data, but we also um, provide um, framed core. We, we, we've got a, um, we are teamed up with a joiner who uh, uh, puts together these nice frames um, showing yeah, the best bits of the North Sea. Uh, so um, and, and, and th these are quite popular retirement gifts, for instance, um, or speaker gifts uh, as well. Um, so that that's really kind of another uh, type of thing uh, we do. And, and it's all in the light of ups, up, upcycling uh, the core into into uh, something that uh, people uh, would like to have, and 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 honestly, that this this goes all over the place. So we just had a, another inquiry from Shell in Houston, for instance. It's uh, people know, yeah, seem to find us nowadays. Um, and uh, so, th and this this picture just shows you another example of of core we provide for research. So that's it's not necessarily the the nicest bits, but some people would like to do injection tests or um, mineralogical analysis, uh, whatever. And, and all they need is a representative bit of core, and that, that's also what we can supply. And sometimes even a, a bit of whole core that uh, that was sealed just after it got uh, was taken out of the ground or out of the core barrel. It's sealed uh, in, in kind of um, a type of, yeah, what is it? It's not it's not resin but it's it it seals the whole core off which then it preserves uh, also the porosity and and maybe even the fluids the formation fluids in them so um that is a good way to preserve the core as 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 much or to mimic as much the conditions as they were um deeper down we don't have a lot of that but but we do have some um so just a few numbers to to round off we have been in operation for um, about five years now and yeah started off with Fairfield donating core and and gradually we become more well known uh, and as said we are now fully integrated within the whole dip and disposal cycle uh, as you can call it um, and as we grew we, we started doing events we've we've Despite COVID, <laughs> we've had uh, about 20 in-person events. We do also things like this uh, remotely. 
um, which we haven't even counted. Um, we have now delivered to more than 20 countries worldwide, um, more than 25 teaching sets. So that means pallets, pallets of core, and they don't go to the UK mostly. It's mostly Europe, but we also have shipped to the Saudi Arabia, for instance, last year, which was quite a surprise. You would think they've got enough core, but uh, no, they were still interested in some North Sea rock as well. <laughs> um, Almost 100 exploration boxes produced now. So that's these wooden boxes with just some uh, some nice samples in them. Um, we have had in total close to 200 well or core from close to 200 wells, um, and almost yeah, adding up to 10 kilometers, <laughs> which I still find hard to believe. But uh, obviously that we do receive core, but we also kind of uh, ship it uh, back uh, away again. So it's only through adding all of that up we reach 10K, which is still a, a, a fairly lengthy um, interval. Uh, so yeah, in terms of uh, distribution, this is a map showing where the core ends up. Um, no surprise, it's, it's mostly in Europe. Uh, but the US, Canada and Mexico have uh, have also found us um, for sure. But also Australia, we even got a request from a university in South Korea at some point. So we shipped a few boxes of core there. So it, it is it is a global um, exercise, um, which is, is, is very nice to see. And it's only through social media and word of mouth, obviously. Uh, that also helps very much to spread the word. And uh, yeah, we've got a, a global reach. Um, and, and these orange uh, flags are, are the places where, the, where we shipped core into. That's for mainly for research um, and for universities. So, so that, that's mostly the bigger shipments. Hence, uh, it's, it's more concentrated in, in, uh, in Europe uh, as such because shipping a pallet to the US is still, yeah, that's, uh, well, unless a company really wants to, uh, to pay uh, a lot for that, that that's a bit uh, pricey for, for, too pricey for most. Um, so to uh, round off, I'm uh, getting close to eight o'clock anyway. Um, yeah, so I've hopefully given you a bit of a, an impression of, of our uh, community interest company and how we provide educational material for the next generation of geoscientists. Uh, and through doing this, we, we, yeah, we, we hope to rescue as much valuable core as possible uh, because we, yeah, we really see this as a, it's, it's an incredibly valuable um, archive and, and, and you will never go back again into North Sea and drill a hole three kilometers deep to <laughs> get some more out. So this is, we are really in this time. Um, we feel that we are in the, well, we are in the right time. We have to do this now because this is a time when a lot of that core is being disposed of. And obviously there is the BGS where you can always go to, but our remit is to distribute that to, to people, uh, for them or universities to really use and integrate into their own um, uh, teaching uh, or, or to use it for for research, whatever. So I think we are really, we really, um, yeah, we've got a fairly unique position in, in that sense. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, that, that's <coughs> that's about it. What we do, uh, a bit of the geology of the North Sea. Um, as well, hopefully uh, that also uh, was uh, a bit new to, or maybe a bit new to you or, or not, if you're a bit familiar, but uh, has painted a bit of a picture of the breadth of core we've got. Um, if you've got any questions, please get in touch with us. Uh, our email address is here. We are also on social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, and our website, of course, as well. Thank you very much for your attention. And any questions, please let me know. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much, Hank. What a brilliant <laughs> lecture. That's <laughs> properly the ultimate rock collection. 